Welcome to the lesson on thrust and pressure. At the end of the lesson, we will be able to define thrust and pressure, explain the effect of pressure in fluids, explain buoyancy, explain Archimedes' principle and its applications, define relative density. Dad, I am trying to push this nail into the wall. Yes, you are applying force on the nail. Here, the force is acting perpendicular to the surface. This is thrust. Thrust is a vector force acting normally on a surface. It is denoted by F. The SI unit of thrust is Newton. Thrust is applied on a surface. Pressure is created. That is why when you try to push the nail or when your mom cuts a fruit using a knife, pressure is created at the pointed end of the nail and the sharp edge of knife. Pressure is thrust acting per unit area. Pressure is denoted by letter P. Hence, pressure is calculated as thrust upon area. The unit of pressure is Newton per meter square. The SI unit of pressure is called Pascal, denoted as PA. Can you explain the relation between thrust and pressure in detail? When you stand on loose sand, your feet go deep into the sand. But when you lie down, your body will not go that deep in sand. In both the cases, force of the body is acting perpendicular to the surface of sand. Here, though the thrust is the same, but effects of the thrust are different. Thrust and pressure are also applicable to fluids, namely liquids and gases. A solid exerts pressure on a surface due to its weight. Similarly, fluids have weight and they also exert pressure on the base and walls of the container in which they are enclosed. Dad, I wonder why a ship made up of iron and steel does not sink in water, but a small coin or nail sinks easily in water. This happens because of buoyancy. Buoyancy? What is that, Dad? Have you ever noticed that when you try to push a closed bottle into water, water exerts a force on bottle in an upward direction? But Dad, Though there is gravitation attraction of the earth, bottle does not immerse. Why is this so? Because the upward force exerted by water on the bottle is greater than gravitational attraction of earth, that is, the weight of the bottle. This upward force exerted by the water on the bottle is known as upthrust or buoyant force. That means in order to immerse the bottle completely into water, we need to apply more force than upward buoyant force. Yes, exactly. The ship floats in the water because the buoyant force exerted by the water on the ship is greater than its weight. In case of a nail, the buoyant force exerted is very less.
Hence, it sinks in the water. Dad, I wonder why a ship made up of iron and steel does not sink in water, but a small coin or nail sinks easily in water. This happens because of buoyancy. Buoyancy? What is that, Dad? Have you ever noticed that when you try to push a closed bottle into water, water exerts a force on bottle in an upward direction? The magnitude of buoyant force depends on the density of the fluid. That means, if the density of the fluid is more than the buoyant force, the force exerted is more. Sea water is denser than fresh water of a river or pond. Hence, it is easy to float in sea water because buoyant force exerted is more. I observed that object like nail sinks in water while a piece of cork of equal mass does not sink. Yes, this happens because of the difference in their densities. The density of a substance is defined as the mass per unit volume. The density of cork is less than the density of water. This means that the upthrust of water on the cork is greater than the weight of the cork, so it floats. And the density of iron nail is more than that of water and hence it sinks. Right, Dad? Exactly. Therefore, objects of less density than a liquid float on that liquid and objects of density greater than that of liquid sink in the liquid. What is relative density, Dad? Density of a substance is mass of unit volume. Sometimes density can be compared with water. Relative density is the ratio of density of a substance to the density of water. Since the relative density is a ratio of similar quantities, it has no unit. I heard about Archimedes' principle. This principle was given by Greek scientist named Archimedes. This states that when a body is immersed fully or partially in a fluid, it experiences an upward force that is equal to the weight of fluid displaced by it. Let us verify this principle using an activity. For this activity, we will require one iron block weighing 500 grams, a spring balance, an overflow jar, a small size beaker and a weighing scale. First, suspend the iron block to the spring balance. It measures 500 grams. Take an overflow jar and fill it with water unless it is on the verge of overflowing. Under the overflow jar, Place a small beaker. Note down the weight of the small beaker. It weighs 100 grams. Now, dip the iron block completely into the water. The water overflows and collects in the small beaker. The reading on the spring balance shows 400 grams. The weight of the beaker is 200 grams. There is an apparent loss of weight of the iron block which is equal to 100 grams. The weight of the water collected in the beaker is equal to 100 grams. Hence, this shows that the difference of the weight of the iron block outside and inside the water is equal to the water displaced into the beaker. This verifies the Archimedes principle. Do we apply Archimedes principle? This principle has many applications.
It is used in designing ships and submarines. Lactometers, which are used to determine the purity of a sample of milk, and hydrometers used for determining density of liquids, are based on this principle. A hydrometer is made up of glass. It consists of two parts, stem and bulb. The bulb contains mercury or lead deposit to make it heavy. This ensures that the hydrometer is afloat upright in the liquid. To determine the density, the liquid is poured into a tall jar and a hydrometer is lowered gently to float freely in the liquid. The hydrometer reading at the level of the liquid gives the density of the liquid. If we pour mustard oil in the jar, then we can say the density reading is approximately 0.92 grams per centimeter cubed.